Hello everybody and welcome back. Let's talk about the problem distribute candy. There are n kids standing in a line, each of them having an integer rating associated with them. We have to distribute the candies following two rules. First, each kid gets at least one candy. And second, kids with the higher ratings than their neighbors get more candies. The goal of this problem is to find the minimum number of candies required to satisfy both of these rules. The constraints mention that n, the number of children, can be between 1 and 10 to the power 5. Let's take an example to understand this better. When the input given to us is 1, 3, 7, 1, the output is 7. And that's because the candies we can give them are 1, 2, 3 and 1 respectively. Let's go ahead and take a look at a visualization to help us understand what's going on better. So here what I've done is I've plotted out all the values. So the kid of the rating 1 is present at the first index, then the kid of the rating 3, then 7, and then 1 back again. Alright, so since the goal of this problem is to find the minimum number of candies possible, and we have to assign at least one candy to each kid, let's go ahead and assign the kid with the value of 1, one single candy. Alright, so this is where we are going to start. with. And now what happens to the kid with the rating 3? Well, since the kid with the rating 3 has a higher rating than kid of the rating 1, we have to give it more candies. Now, how many more? Well, we can give it 3 candies or 5 or 10 or 100 or 1000. The goal of this problem is to minimize the number of candies we can give. So what we'll do instead is we'll just ensure that, you know what, this kid is going to get 2 candies, which is greater than 1. Alright, so this still satisfies the condition mentioned in the question. Alright, so now we move on to the kid with the rating of 7. The kid with the rating of 7 looks at the kid with the rating of 3 on the left hand side and on 1 on the right hand side and realizes that, wait a second, I'm greater than both of them. Now it looks at the kid with the rating 3 and says that, you know what, since I'm greater, since I have a higher rating than my neighbor, I should get one more candy than the neighbor. So we'll assign it the value 3. And now what about the kid with the rating 1 at the present at the very last? Well. We don't have to assign it uh, any more candies than the previous one because this current kid's rating is lesser than its neighbors. Which means that we can go ahead and simply assign it the default value saying that, you know what, since you are at a lower value, we're just going to give you one candy. To formalize the logic we have seen up till now, we'll write it this way. So we'll say that if the rating of the current kid is greater than that of the previous kid, then we are going to increase the score by one. And we are going to save that score corresponding to that kid. Otherwise, we'll set the score to 1 by default. Alright, so let's go ahead and test this idea out on other test cases to see if it actually holds up or not. Or maybe it's just a product of this particular test case. Alright, so let's take another example. This is the example we have. The kids are of a rating 1, 7, 4, 3 and 1. Now, as with previous case, we're going to assign this first kid the candy of 1 because that is the minimum number of candies we can give. What about the kid with the rating of 7? Well, it looks to the left of it and it realizes that, hey, uh, this kid has a candy of 1 and since I am, since my rating is greater than that of the previous one, I'm going to increase the score by 1. So the previous score was 1, the current score becomes 2 and we're going to save that. Now when we move on to the kid with the rating of 4, we'll ask the same question, hey, is this kid having a higher rating or a lower rating than the previous one? So now we'll say that, you know what, since 4 is lesser than 7, this kid's rating is lower than the previous ones, we'll assign it the default value of 1. And we follow the similar logic for the values for the kid of the rating 3 and 1. Alright, so this is the answer we have up till now following the logic we made. However, this is incorrect. And that's because if you realize, the rightmost kid with the rating 1 gets 1 candy. And that's where it has the lowest rating. So we'll have to give it 1 candy. But the kid who is at the second last position with who has the rating 3 should get actually two candies. And that's because in the question it's mentioned that we're looking at the neighbors, which means that we're looking at both the right and the left neighbors together. Now in this case, the kid with the rating 3 has a higher rating than that of the kid of the rating 1 on the right hand side, right? Which means that it should get a greater amount of candy. And so the answer changes, which means that we cannot simply iterate from the left to the right anymore. And we cannot get the answer this way because here's what the real answer is going to look like. Kid with the rating 3 is going to get two candies because of the kid of the rating 1 on the right hand side. 
Similarly, the kid with the rating 4 is not actually going to get one candy, but is going to look at the kid on the right hand side and say that, you know what, hey, this kid of rating 3 is getting two candies, so I should get more, right? So this kid will actually end up getting the answer 3. And similarly, we'll look at the kid of the rating 7, and now it goes ahead and looks at both its right and left neighbors. The left neighbor says 1, and the right neighbor says 3, and it realizes, hey, wait a second, I'm greater than both of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the maximum of them. I'm going to say that, you know what, this right kid is at a rating of 4 and it's already getting 3 candies. Which means that because I'm at rating 7, I'm, I'm higher than the kid of the rating 4, I should get more candies. So I'll go ahead and get 4 candies in total. Now, all of this was to demonstrate the fact that we cannot simply iterate from the left to the right. And as we saw in this case, the change is sort of... Uh, propagated from this one kid on the right hand side and the change is propagated from the right to the left. Make sense? This means that we cannot simply iterate from the left to the right and we can't do the same for the right to the left case either because if we just iterate from the right to the left, we will just have inverted the problem. Which means that iterating in either of these directions is not going to be helpful for us. We need a way out of this situation. We need a better way to assign candies to kids. How about this? How about we start from the lowest rating kids? So in this case, it's the kids of the rating 1. There are no other kids who have a rating lower than 1, which means that we can go ahead and assign values of 1 to both of these kids. That's because there is a constraint mentioned in the question that we have to assign at least 1 candies to even the lowest possible rating kids. So we'll go ahead and start with this default case. Right, this is the default case, keep this in mind. As soon as we find a default case, we're going to assign it one value. All right, so now we'll go ahead and ask the question for three now, right? We're starting from the lowest rating kids and we're trying to move up the ladder. So now we are going to look at the kid with the rating three and we are going to ask the same question. Look at the right and look at the left, right? And we'll say if the kid, if the current kid's rating is greater than the left kid's rating, then you have to give it one more candy. And if the current kid's rating is greater than the right kid's rating, well, you have to give it, uh, you have to give it one more candy than the right kid. Now, in the case of the kid of the rating three, what do we do? We look at the left, there is nothing. We look at the right, there is one candy. Now, this current value is going to be one plus one. So we'll say that the kid of the rating three is going to get a value of two. You'll understand this better as we walk through this more. So let's go ahead and ask the question, what happens to the kid of the rating 4, right? And the kid of the rating 4 looks at the kid on the left hand side, which is 7, it's greater, so we won't touch that. But on the right hand side is a kid with a lower rating, which means that 4 can demand one more candy from the kid of the rating 3, right? So it's going to look at 2 and be like, okay, give me 2 plus 1 candies now, please. So this is going to get 3 candies. And now we finally move on to the kid with the highest rating, right? We started from the lowest rating kids and we slowly moved up the ladder. And now we are going to look at the kid with the value of 7. And what is this kid going to do? This kid will look at the left kid, gives one candy. Is going to look at the right kid, has three candies. And now this kid will realize, hey, you know what? I'm greater than both of these guys. So let me go ahead and get myself four candies because that is going to satisfy both the conditions. All right, so now this should make a lot more sense. In fact, let's go ahead and take one more example, which is a slight bit more complicated example, but solving through this should get you to the solution. And if you're able to solve this yourself, then you've pretty much done the solution for this question. All right, feel free to pause the video at this point of time and try this out yourself. All right, cool, I assume you paused and solved. Now let's go ahead and start walking through this test case. So the first thing we'll do is start from the lowest rating kids. In this case, it's two kids on either side who have the rating one. So we'll go ahead and assign them one value each, right? We're going to go and give them one, one candy because that is the minimum possible candy we can give, right? These are bad kids. So we'll just give them one candy and tell them to be happy with it. Now we'll move up the ladder. We'll say, okay, what about the kid of the rating two? We look at the left, we look at the right. Now the left kid has a candy of one. This guy is higher than that. So it needs more candies. So we'll go ahead and give it the candy. Now we'll go ahead and look at the kids of the rating three. What do we do again? Well, look at the rightmost three value kid, right? 
this guy, this guy is going to look at the right kid, which is lower, and the left kid, which is at equal value. Now, since it found a kid with the rating lower than that, that is, the current kid's value is greater than the right kid's value, we are going to the second if condition, and we'll say that the number of candies we are going to have to give through this kid is one plus the right kid's value. All right, so now we'll go ahead and give this the value of two. What about the second third kid, which is uh, present towards the middle? Well, we'll ask the same question. Hey, is this kid having a higher rating than the kid on its left hand side? No. Is this kid having a higher rating than the kid on the right hand side? Well, no, again, it is equal, but it's not greater, which means that we can go ahead and assign it the default value of one. We basically undercut this kid, okay? <laughs> That's the raw explanation. Now, okay, what about the kid of the rating four? Okay, look on its right, look on its left. Left, there is nothing, but right, you can see that there is kid of rating one. So we are going to give it the value of two. And then for the value of seven, we're going to look at the left and look at the right. And what do we see? There's two either case, so just do two plus one, giving us three. All right, so this is it for the logic. It's pretty simple. What we're going to do is we're going to start from the lowest rating kids, and we're going to gradually move up the food chain. We're going to gradually move up the ladder and look at from the worst kids to the best kids. And each time we'll go and look at the left and the right and assign it one more candy if needed. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the code. So n is the length of the array, the number of kids we have, and data is what is going to be the very helpful part for us. So data is just a sorted array of x comma, basically saying that, okay, for this particular kid rating, this is its index, right? That is all I've done. So what we are going to do is we are going to sort all of these kids by the ratings. But since we are sorting, we are going to mess with the array structure, right? We're going to mess with the indices. So we need a way to store the indices, and that is why we have this x comma i instead of just x. All right, cool. So now we are going to go ahead and assign one by default to every single kid. That's the initial uh, assumption in the question. We have to assign every single kid at least one values. All right, so we'll go ahead and assign everyone at least one candy. And now we're going to iterate over the data. We'll say that for every single x comma i, that is now x is not really important for us, but we'll say that for every single i, for every single index that you get, we'll go ahead and ask two questions. Hey, if i greater than zero, basically saying that if there is a kid on the left-hand side of this particular kid, and this current kid's value is greater than the left kid's value, well, if that is the case, then go ahead and do candies of i minus one plus one, right? If there is a kid to the left of you who is a valid kid, then go ahead and take its value and increase it by one only if the current, current kid's rating is greater than the left one's. And we'll do the similar thing for the kid on the right-hand side. And this is just a simple sanity check just to ensure that, you know, the element i plus one actually exists in the array or not. Pretty simple. And, uh, Towards the end, what we can do is we can simply return the sum of all the candies, right? As you saw, the yellow elements are all the candies for every single person, for every single kid. And so we'll just sum them all up together to get the final value. All right, let's go ahead and uh, test this out just to see if everything is working correctly. And we'll go ahead and submit this. All right, cool. So this is it for the video solution to distribute candies on interview build. If you like this video, if you like the visuals, let me know in them in the comment section down below. And if you don't want to put any comments, well, just go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. It lets me know, it gives me valuable feedback to work upon my skills. All right. Anyways, this is it for this video solution. And as always, thank you so much for watching.